Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. Today, I wanted to talk to y'all about the uh, 1950s dish rag, dish towel, and hand towel. Now, I know some of y'all are gonna remember this. Uh, almost every kitchen in the 1950s had this little metal rack thing. It was three little metal things sticking out. I'm using my fingers to kind of demonstrate and they moved back and forth and they were usually up on the bottom part of a top cabinet. That's where you hung your dish rag, your dish towel, and your hand towel. And you would kind of spread those apart so they would get dry. Now I know some of y'all remember that. Anyway, uh, the dish rag was used to of course wash the dishes because they did not have dishwashers. And then the dish towel was used only to dry dishes. You didn't ever use it for anything else. And uh, then the hand towel was used to dry your hands off with when you washed your hands or after you'd been doing something, even washing dishes, you rinse your hands off. And that's when you use the hand towel. Now, you never ever use those rags or those towels for anything else other than the designated use for them, of them, okay? So anyway, uh, of course, there were no paper towels, uh, and there, uh, I wanted to uh, mention that we also did not have garbage disposals, and I say we, I was a young person back then, but I well remember how everything was. So, uh, you did not have garbage disposals, so therefore any food scraps went in the garbage can. Now the garbage can was either lined with, and it was metal by the way, it was not plastic, it was metal. And it was lined with newspaper or one of those big brown bags from the grocery store. Now in our house there were five children, so the grocery bags that you put in the garbage can didn't last, so we would end up also using newspaper. Now, because of that, when you put your garbage out on the street, it got flies in it in the summertime, and most of the time it got maggots in it too. So the garbage men uh, back during the day only came once a week. So most always during the summer months there would be maggots in the garbage. So what you had to do was uh, pour Clorox in the bottom of the garbage, kind of rinse it around and get your hose out and then pour it in the little ditch that ran in front of your house beside the sidewalk. Everybody did it that way. And uh, so you can see why back then you had more flies certainly than you do now. I mean if we get one fly in here I'm chasing it around with a fly swat. But back then, killing flies in the house was kind of a every other day thing because you had kids going in and out and that kind of thing. And you had flies breeding in every garbage can. So anyway, but, but the main reason of this video, I wanted to show you all the dish rags that I'm making. Now, the dish rag meant, meant that you didn't, and even now it means you don't have to use so many paper towels. So. In our house, what has happened is because Mr. Bucky does the clothes folding and he also loads the dishwasher. So what has happened, I actually tore some of these uh, big uh, uh, sackcloth towels that I got from Walmart in half because I discovered that if you had a big wide one and you just folded it in half, it made a great dish rag. Now, I don't know if up north and other places, sorry, that they called these dish rags. I don't know what else you would have called them, but y'all might remember seeing a video that I made back, I don't know, a few months ago, and I put a little purple kind of decorative thing around it, and I did that so that uh, Mr. Bucky would be able to know this is not going in the rag bag. It's actually a dish cloth. So we had the same problem again. So what I did is just uh, cut some of these sackcloths in half and then I used that as a dish rag now. I like it much better than the four ply. Like this is actually, I think, four ply 
I'm not sure. I don't even remember how I made them exactly. All I know is this one that's double works better because see it comes apart when it's wet and it rings out really well. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. And I'm actually sewing up that seam with black thread. And so that way Mr. Bucky knows this never goes in the rag bag. It goes in the cabinet because it is actually a dish rag. Now did y'all call them dish rags? I bet you did. And, and usually they were raggedy, you know, you would buy them at the store and they were that uh, kind of a woven little plaid thing, real thin, but very absorbent. But somehow or other, now they do something to the cotton, at least in this country and some of the other countries, and it just makes it not very absorbable. So I, anyway, I've done videos on all that, comparing the towels and all. So I'm going to make, uh, me a, I'm going to have about 10 of them because we do change the dish rag every day. So uh, anyway, I'll take you all over to the little ironing board there and show you how we do this. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so what I have done is actually folded one of those uh, flower sack towels in half. And now this one's actually been used many times and I want it to sort of be cut straight. So I folded it in half and ironed it across the seam. And then I, in order to cut it sort of straight, I'm just gonna cut that little fold right off, which cuts, I don't know, less than a half inch off of it. But anyway, that way I can cut it somewhat straight. I, I did try folding it and putting my scissors in there and cutting it like that. And the corner of my scissors kept getting caught on the material because uh, this is a loose woven cotton and it's not treated. So that way it makes it a lot more absorbable. All right, so now that we've got that off, I'm gonna take one half of it and put the other one up there. And I'm just gonna cut, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna sew down the seam but I'm going to fold it down first, just like a fourth of an inch. Oops, y'all couldn't see there. I'm just folding it down with my finger, using my thumb sort of as a guide and just turning it under about a fourth of an inch. And by the way, I was using these and not even sewing them. I just cut them in half and they do unravel a little bit, but to my surprise, they don't unravel that much. But I think that's why Mr. Bucky was putting it in the uh, rag bag, because to him it looked like a rag. Well, it was a rag, right? It was a dish rag. All right, so I've got one uh, part of it folded down about a fourth of an inch. I'm gonna turn it under and fold it over one more time and that way I'll be able to catch all the raw edges when I make my seam. And again, I'm using black thread on this, so Mr. Bucky will know this is a dish rag, not just a regular rag. All right, so now all we're gonna do is go over to the sewing machine and sew that down. See, take like two seconds. All right, we're gonna move you back over. All right, so we are back at the uh, sewing machine now. Now I tried uh, cutting them in half and letting the selvage in be on the uh, outside, but that didn't work all that great. So I went ahead and cut it where you've got the seam on the side. Seems to work better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go in and uh, hit the reverse on my machine and that's just to lock the stitch in. So I'm gonna go backwards, several stitches, and then I'm gonna go forward. And of course, I'm not gonna worry about whether this is sewed properly with a perfectly, perfectly straight seam or not, because they're just gonna be dish rags. And by the way, a lot of y'all have asked about this machine. It's a, a brother machine. I bought it at Walmart for $59 several years ago. And I have been totally sewing on it ever since, or with it. 
making a lot of uh, Roman shades and that kind of thing. So it's had a lot of use. Now you can still make these even if you don't have a machine if you just cut these um, uh, towels in two and then after a couple of washes they'll unravel to about maybe half an inch and then they don't unravel anymore. So then when I get to the end I'm just going to hit my reverse. back several inches and then come forward and that'll seal that seam. All right, and that's all there is to it. And I've left my scissors over yonder, so hold on. Yeah, I have determined that I need two pair of these scissors, one to leave on the end of the ironing board and one to leave by the sewing machine. All right, so we just clip those seams off, and I'm not doing any kind of fancy stitch or anything, but I do want to be able to change this every day. And by the way, stains do not uh, stay in the material. Uh, to my surprise, even spaghetti sauce comes right out in the wash, and I do use Clorox when I'm washing these just to disinfect them. There's what the end looks like. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could definitely sew that by hand, just, just make little itty bitty stitches. Right, let me move y'all back. That's as far back as it'll go. We'll just turn you around this way. There, all right, there it is. So see, I can use it folded like that, which is about the size of this other rag here that I made before. But sometimes, like when I'm wiping off the cooktop, I kind of let it be spread out a little bit and it'll be smushed up in your hand. It just works a lot better, y'all. All right, hold on a minute. All right, y'all, we are back. And uh, if y'all got any comments, if y'all remember the little rack that held the dishes, it's, it was like metal and it had three little arms and they moved out and in and it was just on a little hinge and really almost always attached to the side of an upper cabinet. And a lot of people liked their little rack to be in front of a window, maybe over the sink. and. That way the sun could come in and hit, hit the rags and disinfect them or something, I don't know. But anyway, almost every home I ever remember going in always had that little uh, rack to hold the dish rag, the dish towel, and the hand towel. And I did notice in Walmart the other day, they still have those, only they're plastic and didn't look like any, anybody was buying them, really. They were little box there and it was full but uh, they were they're plastic now but they there they'd be about that long and let's see yeah about about a foot long and the end of them was it was metal and the end of it was tipped up and uh, you just hung your dish rag you would fold it over one time maybe hang it on there like that and you do the dish rag the dish towel and the hand towel the same way so uh, that's some of the uh, uh, things from the 1950s that are no more. I mean, I've never seen a metal one anywhere. Of course, I've never really been looking for one, but I'll bet some of y'all still have those little racks. Anyway, leave it in the comments below if y'all remember all that. And if you decide to make some of these dish rags like this for uh, wiping up counters, of course, everybody's got dishwashers now, so you don't really need a rag, but it, this saves on paper towels, I can tell you. You won't use near as many paper towels. And like this one has been washed over and over, and I was using it as a hand towel, and uh, I don't think it's got any stains at all on it. I don't really see any. 
There's a little red piece of lint, but that's not a stain. But anyway, they just wash up so nice, and I always put Clorox in them just for the disinfecting uh, factor there. And of course, putting them in the dryer is gonna disinfect them even further. So I just think they're a good thing to have and a good alternative to paper towels. So this would be a frugal tip for you, okay? So y'all leave your comments down below and uh, tell me about your 1950s if, if y'all remember. Well, some of you weren't even born then, but if you were young back then and you remember those dish, I don't know what they called them. Dish towel rack, I think is what they called them. Anyway, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.